Welcome back, Clackheads. Getting right into this tutorial. You're going to need a few items and some unique skills. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. But I have a very particular lack of skills. Jokes aside, you'll need to learn how to solder. Full disclosure alert, this isn't a soldering tutorial. What? What the fu- Don't let this intimidate you, though. The requirements for soldering are minimal for this installation. However, if you're wanting to explore all this hobby has to offer, it is highly worthwhile taking the time to learn to solder efficiently. Don't get me wrong though, there is still tons of fun to be had without. Let's take a look at the tools you're going to need. An EC11 rotary encoder. I'll put the product link in the description below. A standard soldering iron. A solder sucker tool in case you need to remove a bad solder. Solder wire. And proper ventilation. The first thing you'll need to do is disassemble the Q1 and isolate the PCB completely from the PCB plate. Don't forget to deattach the daughter board as you don't want to put any stress on the ribbon cable. To remove the PCB from the plate, you need to remove the six golden screws surrounded by white borders. Once you have all six screws removed, the PCB will separate. If you take a look at the PCB where the rotary encoder will be, you'll quickly see where and how it should be mounted. This is probably pretty obvious, but make sure you take a mental note of which side you're actually going to be soldering. I decided to clip off these two side pins as there isn't a requirement to have them soldered down for the rotary encoder to work. If you don't have a pair of cutters, feel free to just leave them be. Be sure not to clip any of the other pins as you need to solder the remaining five. After I mounted the encoder, I decided to bend the pins away from the hot swap circuit on the back side of the PCB. I'm not the most confident when it comes to my soldering capabilities and I didn't want to risk damaging the hot swap housing. It's go time, nut up or shut up. Turn on your solder and set it to roughly 370 degrees Celsius or 700 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, be sure you have good ventilation as the fumes from soldering can cause some harmful effects. Honestly, I was pretty nervous at this point, but far more determined as the camera was rolling and I was already pot committed. I'll be the first to admit that my solder job wasn't spectacular by any means, but you can always desolder and resolder again. Quick tip is to ensure your pre-coat your iron with a bit of solder before engaging the contact point on the PCB. The pre-solder tip greatly helps the heat transfer and will make your soldering job smoother. Great work, the hard part of the job is done. For the next steps, we're going to need to download a couple things and apply a new firmware to the PCB as the default doesn't have the rotary encoder enabled. We'll need QMK Toolbox to flash the PCB and we'll also need the modified firmware file. Luckily for us, HM Faisal has the modified firmware code to enable the rotary encoder on his GitHub. What a legend. You can find the URL for the firmware file in the description as well. Let's go ahead and install QMK Toolbox. It will prompt you to install drivers, so agree to do this and let it do its thing. 12 seconds later. Once that's finished, let's go ahead and load the firmware to flash the Q1 with. Okay, we've got QMK installed and we have our modified firmware ready to go. Let's go ahead and factory reset the Q1. To do this, you need to remove power from the Q1 and make sure QMK toolbox is opened. While holding down the reset button, which can be found underneath your spacebar key, plug the power back into the Q1 until you see the yellow prompt on the QMK toolbox. You can release the reset button at this point and hit the flash button. You should see it attempting to flash and hopefully complete successfully. Congratulations! Give yourself a pat on the back, you've just enabled your rotary encoder. Once the flash is complete, be sure to test out the functionality before you decide to reassemble the Q1. I should note that this isn't official Keychron firmware, but I totally expect that they will offer their own version of the firmware in the near future with rotary encoder functionality. I'm leveraging QMK Keyboard Tester here to make sure it's reading all the encoder inputs properly. Also, on top of being able to control volume settings, holding shift while rotating the knob will toggle through the various tabs in your browser. Holding control and rotating the knob will scroll up or down through whatever you're currently browsing similar to that of the page up and page down function. Thanks Dub Nation for tuning in yet again. I hope this guide was helpful. If it was, show your boy some love, clack that like, and thock that subscribe. Special shout out to my dad, the Don, King Dubs, the greatest role model I have in my life. Thanks for teaching me how to solder, but more importantly, paving the path for me to be the best that I can be.